All right, we're starting right off with what's happening between U.S. and China. The U.S. Treasury Secretary arrived in Beijing on Thursday, kicking off a visit aimed at improving communication and stabilizing the tense relationship. Now, Yellen's China visit, it marks the second trip by a cabinet official since ties between the world's top two economies deteriorated further earlier this year. Now in Beijing, Yellen was greeted on the tarmac by U.S. Ambassador to China, Nicholas Burns, and the Chinese Finance Ministry official, Yang Yingmin. Yellen seeks to expand lines of correspondence, avoid miscommunication, and widen collaboration on the global economy, climate change, debt distress, and other issues. Her trip comes in the face of concerns over China's economic recovery and the United States' interest rate hikes. Now, Washington has shifted from Beijing's ambiguous about about being ambiguous about how far it was supporting decoupling to explicitly adopting a strategy of de-risking instead they have mentioned this several times already that they do not want to decouple from china now analysts however do not expect a quick resolution to tensions us is considering a program to restrict certain outbound investments involving sensitive technology with national security implications an issue that has riled china other possible sticking points include amendments to china's anti espionage law the statute recently broadened definition of spying while banning transfer of information relating to national security the move has spooked foreign and domestic businesses. Now, relations came under further stress this year when the United States shot down a Chinese balloon it said was used for surveillance, a claim China strongly denied. All right, earlier we spoke to our correspondent Susan Tehrani from New York, who explains the purchasing of sovereign debt by foreign countries and how it helps maintain openness in the global economy. Listen to this. Many worry that China's ownership of American debt gives the Chinese economic leverage over the United States. That's not necessarily true for a wide variety of reasons, but let's just talk about some of them. The purchasing of sovereign debt by foreign countries is very commonplace and creates openness in the global economy. China's stake in America's debt has more of a binding than dividing effect between the two countries. And even if China wished to call in its loans, well, taking measures is easier said than done. American debt is widely held and extremely desirable and a desirable asset in the global economy. So whenever China does decide to sell, well, it's simply purchased by another country. Furthermore, holding America's debt helps China's currency and its domestic market. Now, regarding the United States going after those bonds, well, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen is in China right now. She is the good cop of the Biden administration when talking about economic ties between the two countries and she's there for the most part to convince the Chinese that the economic measures the United States is taking is for national security reasons and not to rattle China. So the chances of her talking about this issue is very slim. Now Susan also tells us the backdrop to Janet Yellen's visit. Listen in. So not just that spy balloon incident, but also a recent visit by Secretary of State Anthony Blinken, which really yielded no concrete result. The Biden administration has taken an aggressive approach in protecting critical technologies from Chinese companies and in October imposed export controls on semiconductors. Officials don't expect Yellen's trip to really have any concrete results or for the two sides uh, to talk about thorny issues, but administration officials do want to keep this line of communication open with China, as China has made clear that it will use access to critical and crucial minerals as a political weapon. And now to discuss this further, we're joined by Edward P. Joseph from California. He's a senior fellow and lecturer at Johns Hopkins University and a foreign policy analyst. Sir, thank you so much for joining us on this broadcast. With you. Now, sir, Anthony Blinken's uh, recent visit, that was pegged as one which would perhaps open communication lines between the United States and China. But a day after, we saw that President Biden called Xi Jinping a dictator. Now it's Janet Yellen's turn. What should one expect from this visit? I think we can expect some uh, reasonable improvement in tone in the relationship. And I think it's not excluded that 
there could be agreement in some areas, some shared areas on economic matters and potentially a uh, agreement for a return visit, a reciprocal visit of Secretary of Treasury Yellen's counter, Chinese counterpart to the United States. So I think that those are things that we could reasonably expect from this visit. We know the tone here was uh, set uh, by Secretary Yellen actually in April at my university, Johns Hopkins uh, School of Advanced International Studies here in Washington, D.C., where I am, um, and in which she made this major policy speech. And what she tried to do with this speech is say, look, uh, to China, look, we, we are not going to agree on national security issues, and we are not, the United States is not going to back off its concerns on national security issues. But uh, we, the United States, are not trying to exploit these differences and these measures that we take in the security sphere to take economic advantage. Those were her words. We're not trying to take economic advantage. So fundamentally, Secretary Yellen is trying to separate the economic relationship, at least uh, some facets of the economic relationship from the, the contentious security issues which divide and will continue to divide uh, the United States and China because President Biden uh, will not back off of those and, and not back off the concerns uh, that uh, folks have across the spectrum here in the United States about Chinese intentions. Please. Right. So also wanted to just discuss that, you know, businesses in China are a bit spooked after the amendment brought about in its anti-espionage law, which bans transfer of information relating to national security. Uh, would this be brought up in the visit as it will have economic implications eventually? I think, uh, of course, it will. Uh, and I think the issues that will be brought up, including that, are known to Secretary Yellen because uh, these these visits are highly orchestrated. They're highly prepared. And uh, she has had uh, two significant meetings. She met uh, back in January with a senior Chinese finance ministry official, and she is meeting that same former, a former senior official, again in China tomorrow. And she met with the Chinese ambassador uh, to Washington. So. The, the agenda, the array of issues is very well known to avoid any surprises on both sides. And Secretary Yellen, again, will be trying to uh, look for areas that are less contentious. And the Chinese, in this sense, uh, both respect and appreciate Secretary Yellen because she's known as an economic uh, an economist first, as an academic economist, an accomplished economist, someone who headed the U.S. Federal Reserve and who understands, for example, on the issues of tariffs, that fundamentally Secretary Yellen doesn't like tariffs. She considers them a tax on consumers. And so in the economic sphere, they know that she is someone they can talk to, can do business with, but who will not, of course, uh, uh, forsake the U.S. national security interests, which have been made very clear by President Biden. Please. Right. So also, Washington is not supporting decoupling. Instead, it's going for a strategy called de-risking instead. Talk to us about the stark contrast that we see between in these statements and the usual anti-China rhetoric that we usually get to hear from the United States. Well, th this is a, a very important distinction. Because this is where you see you have a difference between the Biden administration and uh, the, the highly confrontational approach of uh, former President Trump. So. Uh, in this respect, uh, both uh, uh, President Biden is no less concerned than the Republicans about uh, Chinese intentions and about a threat to China. In some ways, the U.S. has actually increased uh, its concern and its protection, for example, on Taiwan. And the, the uh, relationship has been quite tense because of uh, Taiwan and because of statements and steps taken while President Biden has been president. But uh, th there is a desire here to at least move away from the concept of a complete rupture between these two largest and interdependent economies. And that's what the Biden administration is trying to manage, is to say, yes, we have our differences and we are not going to change on those. But we do not need to have a, uh, uh, either a security, military, or an economic confrontation. That's where Secretary Yellen comes in. That's what she's trying to do. But yes, uh, the U.S. is a believer in uh, maintaining uh, some independence in supply chains and avoiding the right. overdependence of China. And, and that's something she will not back off on. And, 
Chinese, I think, uh, are beginning to understand that. Please. Thank you so much for your insight, sir. That was Edward P. Joseph joining us from California from the Johns Hopkins University. Thank you very much.